What's going on everybody? Today I'll be showing you how to adjust chain slack on my 2015 FJ09, but this applies to an MT09 or FZ09 as well, because it's the same platform bike. Now I know there's a lot of controversy about what the appropriate chain slack on these bikes should be. In the Yamaha service manual it says 5 to 15 millimeters measured at the center between front and rear sprocket. But if you follow any mechanics that have been working on bikes for a long time, they say the spec on this bike from Yamaha is set too tight. It's been studied that when the bike is under full compression, you lose 20 millimeters of chain slack when the bike goes through its full compression. That means if you have the chain slack set at 30, which is beyond what the manufacturer recommends, by the time it's at full compression, you'll have 10. And even if you set it within Yamaha spec, you might be with negative slack or put the chain in tension when you go to full compression. And that can accelerate wear on a bunch of different components in your drivetrain, which you don't want. The Yamaha spec is five to 15 millimeters, but personally, I'm gonna be targeting 40 to 45 millimeters on this bike. I hope you can make your informed choice. I'm telling you what I've researched and what the Yamaha manual has said, but I'm hoping I can present this information to you so you can make an informed choice. Enough of the jibber jabber, let's get into it. For this task, you'll need a 27 millimeter for the axle nut, along with a breaker bar or long ratchet to loosen it. You'll need two 12 millimeters to make your adjustment and hold the adjustment in place while you tighten the lock nut. You'll need a ruler or a measuring tape to measure your chain slack, and you'll need a torque wrench to torque up the axle nut to 108 foot-pounds as per Yamaha spec. With the bike on center stand, I put a green mark on my tape here to show you where you're supposed to check your chain slack. Coincidentally, the outer diameter of the tire basically lines up with the same point of where you should be checking the chain slack. You should be checking the chain slack perpendicular to the chain, not vertical with gravity. So line up your thing with your line across the chain and move it up and down and check your range of motion. Currently at this chain slack, we have 25 millimeters of movement. I'm gonna target 45 because that's what I believe is gonna be best for the bike. So we need to loosen off this adjusting lock nut here and then dial this screw in towards the bike and then check to make sure the blocks are equal on both sides of the bike so that the wheel is straight in the frame. Now that our chain slack is dialed in on the left side of the bike with making this adjustment, we're gonna go to the other side and make sure the distance between this aluminum block and the end of the swing arm are equal. Otherwise, the wheel could be crooked in the rear swing arm. If you have to make an adjustment over here, it will slightly adjust the tension on the other side of the bike, so you have to recheck your tension and then make adjustments further. It can be challenging to make both the chain tension correct and the wheel straight, but once you get it close, it only takes small adjustments. Now with the chain in a happy place at the right tension and it's straight in the frame, we just have to tighten the axle down again. But this can be tricky because the blocks want to slide away from the adjustment point. So to give it some tension and to keep the wheel pulled towards the bike and pressed against the adjustments, take a wrench, your 12 mil, slide it in between the, the gear and the chain and just set it into the chain like so. It'll hold it with a good amount of tension and keep the blocks pressed against the nuts so that they don't back off while you're tightening it. Now torque the wheel to 108 foot-pounds as per spec, we'll be done. And that's a wrap on adjusting the chain slack on my 2015 FJ09. I hope my tips and tricks helped you along and made this process easier for you. It's not a complicated service, but with the tips I gave you, I hope it's a little easier for you. And most of all, I hope you can have an informed choice about what chain slack is right for you and your bike. I'll link down in the description down below where I got my information from about what chain slack is recommended from different people and different sources. So check those out if you're interested in doing a deep dive on the topic. But as always, thanks for watching and have a good day.